Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville show. My name is Jerry Miller. It's a Monday. We are live for Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. A lot on today's program. I think you know where we're going to start, and it's certainly a very nebulous situation we are in here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, we very much enjoy connecting with you through this platform. We're live on 12 different Facebook pages. And the beautiful thing about today's show and all the shows that we do on this network is that you, the guest, can interact with the show by leaving your perspective in the comment section um, of any of these 12 Facebook pages. I'm gonna encourage you to do that. I'm gonna encourage you to give the show a like and a share. The hot topic of today's program is the protests on Sunday in downtown Charlottesville that originated at the free speech wall, that culminated at the Charlottesville police station, and in the process um, migrated through the downtown mall and back, and included um, interaction and engagement with patrons and customers of businesses on the downtown mall, namely the restaurants and their patios. So that is um, a hot topic. That is a hot topic today. We have... Um, that topic I want to analyze from every single angle possible, including footage from Allison Rabel, who's a daily progress reporter. She does a fantastic job. She has footage um, that we're going to give daily progress credit for from the parking garage. Um, were you able to get the footage from NBC 29, Jude, at all? No, I can't So we have footage from the daily progress. We today, our team went to the police station just to see what was going on. And it was a tale of two days. Last night, yesterday evening, say 4 to 5 p.m., in front of the mall, you had numerous graffitis and paintings and um, call-to-action messages literally um, put into the brick walls, into the asphalt in front of the police station. I'm going to show you photos from 28 minutes ago of how Charlottesville Police Department and its maintenance team, what they've done um, since yesterday. We also have a prominent Facebook group in the community, the Charlottesville Moms Group, who is on a brief hiatus or has taken a pause with content creation and engagement on Facebook due in part to COVID-19, the social unrest, and the volatility we see in freedom of expression on social media. So the social unrest, the pandemic, the uncertainty that we face going all the way down to the micro level to the Charlottesville Moms Facebook group. And if you're a part of that Facebook group, an incredibly valuable resources for mothers across Charlottesville and Central Virginia now on pause. Welcome to the show. My name is Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Seville show. We're live um, five days a week from 1230 to 130. We'll have Keith Smith on the program to preview the week ahead for his program from a real estate standpoint. We had some news coming down from st some statistics in May um, about where we are from a, a home standpoint. Existing home sales plunged in May. But we think that's the bottom, and there's calls for positivity and confidence. We'll explain why. We'll have Keith explain why on the I Love Seville show. A lot of fantastic clients make this program possible. Two of our favorites are Intrastate Pest and Service Companies and Scott Wagner, Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. I've seen firsthand how the two companies, Intrastate Pest and Service Companies and Scott Wagner, Chiropractic and Sports Medicine, have committed themselves to our community. They're doing a heck of a job, a heck of a job, especially in COVID times. They're so focused, interstate, and Dr. Wagner to health and safety first, like so focused. And that's important. And that's frankly what I want to hear with, the, uh, with, with, with businesses like them. Now, let's get to the first headline. Guys, For this is the fourth straight weekend of protest. We can get the Daily Progress headlight on screen now. I was not there for this particular protest. It started at the free speech wall on the downtown mall, and it migrated peacefully up the downtown mall and then back down Market Street to the police department. Um, here's where this particular protest was unique 
compared to others. And this particular protest, the protesters were engaging with patrons on patios on the downtown mall. So you may be celebrating Father's Day, and you're a Citizen Burger Bar, you're the Whiskey Jar, you're one of the few restaurants that are open downtown. And you're having a good time, you're supporting local, you're having a beer, a burger, some barbecue, whatever it may be, you're reveling in, in, in a Father's Day celebration with your loved ones, and a group of a couple hundred people comes down the mall, and with energy, palpable energy, and energy that is undoubtedly felt in the air, especially in a very um, intimate setting, like the downtown mall, then we have protesters engage with patrons on patios. So that's very different from what we've seen in the past. This, this, this is, um, from my standpoint, cause from, for concern. Cause for concern. And I'm going to take a very different view here. A very different view, okay? And bear with me. We have this world that without question is uncertain. Take our country. Our country is uncertain with its identity and the path it's choosing forward. Our youth especially, millennials and younger, are galvanizing and they're rallying around communities like Charlottesville, like Richmond, like Seattle, like Minneapolis, like Atlanta, like Tulsa, in a lot of places, and they feel a sense of civic engagement and, and a sense of we have to make a change. We're the next generation, okay? This is going to fall on us and our kids. And I've been so impressed with the, the millennial and younger leadership in these protests that has gone about this so peacefully and impactfully and strategically. Until yesterday, I thought the strategy was short-sighted of engaging or harassing or any, any, any kind of word, engaging, harassing, heckling, screaming at, encouraging, however you want to look at the engagement of protesters to customers on patios on the wall, okay? And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That I didn't see as strategic, and bear with me here. The businesses in Charlottesville need our help more than ever, especially with a pandemic on our hands, and they're now reopening. So they're now emerging or re-emerging from the ashes. The last thing they need as they're re-emerging from the ashes is to have you know, um, water thrown on them to stifle their potential growth here. So where I'm going with this is think big picture. If you hurt small business in Charlottesville because of your protests, what will end up happening is the back-end revenue is not going to be there from a budget standpoint to do important things that will create equality when it comes to race and an economic disparity. We need the small businesses in the community to do well so they can generate the taxable revenue. And then, if you want to make an impact in the community, and if you want to make a difference as a protester, go to council and to city hall and say, guys, we understand revenue is being generated for the city. We'd like a little bit larger say on how these dollars are being spent to create social equality and, 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 and wealth equality, okay? By disturbing the business cycle or by hurting the small business owner in the city of Charlottesville, by protesting in their business hours and by heckling and harassing their customers during prime earning time, the weekend, Father's Day, people want to go out. That's prime earning time. When you heckle and harass and discourage um, mom and dads and Charlottesvillians from supporting businesses take downtown, what's going to end up happening, it's going to create a domino effect that's going to create more social um, 
more of a, a wealth divide and more of a, more of a, a race divide. Because the city is going to get more financially strapped with its resources because its small business owners won't be generating the tax revenue. And when it's small business owners and when it's hospitality and when it's restaurants and when it's retail are not, and it's music venues, when they're not generating the tax revenue for the Charlottesville municipality, this is what ends up happening. City schools don't have as much money to function at the levels that they would like to function at. You saw that with the removal of a Spanish program for elementary students in the city of Charlottesville. When you don't have the revenue coming into the budget, you're not as in tune with keeping um, the upkeep of roads or maintaining projects and bridges and lights. You may be cutting corners when it comes to a affordable housing standpoint. You may cut corners from a fund like the city of Charlottesville allocated $500,000, Charlottesville City Council, a few years ago to the New Hill Development Corporation. And the New Hill Development Corporation took $500,000 of taxpayers' money a few years ago when the economy was really good. And the council, led by Dr. Wes Bellamy, council gave them half a million dollars to, to, to the New Hill Development Corporation and to Yolanda Harrell, the CEO of this corporation, of this nonprofit. And they were said, use this $500 of taxpayers' money and make the Star Hill neighborhood um, more, um, you know, offer educational opportunities for residents in the Star Hill neighborhood. It's an African American neighborhood, historically. Offer educational and financial opportunities. And educational and financial um, literacy, um, wealth planning, entrepreneurship curriculum for Star Hill, for the Vinegar Hill neighborhoods. So when the economy is strong and you have incremental and tax revenue coming into your budget, you have disposable income that can be allocated to help close the, the, the wealth gap and the race gap that is undoubted, undoubtedly present and prevalent. There's no question a wealth and race gap is present and prevalent, and there's no question this wealth and race gap is being magnified by COVID, certainly here in Charlottesville, and there's no question that what's happening here is causing civil unrest. If you don't see what I'm seeing, you're just not reading the tea leaves correctly. But I, I, I encourage the protesters who've been so strategic, and I applaud them for such a job well done so far from a peaceful, strategic, and impactful protest across Charlottesville. But when you start negatively impacting the small businesses in the community, that's going to create a lack of tax revenue to maintain the city and the way we want to maintain it. And how we want to maintain the city, I think, moving forward is through transparency, is through bridging a wealth and race gap, and through making Charlottesville a better place for all of us, regardless of black, white, Puerto Rican, Haitian, or Asian, and regardless of lower, middle, or upper class. Something to consider. I'd like to play some of the, uh, the video. How about this from the Daily Progress and Allison Rabel? She's fantastic. And you don't, you don't, no audio on it. You can just put it on screen. Give us the thumbs up when it's on there. Um, she was, and she does a fantastic job. Allison Nolan Stout, Catherine Knott, and is it Tyler Campbell? I think it's Tyler Campbell, Daily Progress. I'm doing a quick Google right here. It might be not Tyler. It's another Tyler. It's a byline. I, I, I mentioned this to them on Twitter. I would love, along with those five reporters from the Daily Progress, to start our own news business behind a paywall. I'll finance it. I'll offer a newsroom in my building um, where we can have rent six months free. It'll be five people in the organization. Each of us gets a fifth of the pie and five pieces of new fresh content every day behind a paywall that's quality. I would love to do that. So you have Allison's content ready to go. Play it. Let's play that now. Look at the screen, okay? Look at the screen. One of the folks I'd love to partner with, Allison, 
She was in the Market Street garage from up top. It's on, Judah? Okay, it's on now. Look now. This is the value of watching the video form of the show. Okay? I'm talking over it. You don't have to, you don't have to count me back in. There's no, so, there's no sound. Um, so she's up at the Market Street garage watching it. And there you, see, there you see the protests in front of the Charlottesville Police Department. Yesterday, there was a number of, like... Um, you know, call to action messages on the wall or on the asphalt outside the Charlottesville Police Department. Today, about 37 minutes ago, Judah, our director, went with his phone and captured some photos of what it looks like today. Run through those photos and montage form on screen, Judah. Put those on screen now and give me a thumbs up when there are. Okay, so look at the screen. We showed you earlier... Um, the video from yesterday and Allison of the Daily Progress from the Market Street Garage and the protest in front. Today, I'm showing you photos that we captured with our team of how many people do you think were out there? I counted five folks that... Let's get the microphone in front of you, please. And the, uh, and the, the uh, mic turned on. I counted five um, folks working for Charlottesville out there, a t uh, along with a ton of heavy equipment. What did you see, Judah? Uh, I think you're right about five. I've got uh, two guys with signs stopping and slowing traffic. I've got one guy directing traffic, and I've got two guys working the machine to, uh, to repave and repaint. All right, come back to me here. I'm getting um, a text message from our team on the second floor that's saying they're still there. So here's what, we ha here's what happened in a 24-hour period of time, and then we'll move on to our next story. This is what happened in a 24-hour period of time. Protest fourth straight weekend starts at the free speech wall in the downtown mall. It goes from the free speech wall up the downtown mall, then back down Market Street. In the process of going up more, uh, the downtown mall, um, the protesters engaged, encouraged, harassed, heckled patrons of restaurants, namely Citizen Burger Bar and said to the patrons, you are privileged to be able to eat a burger and drink a beer on Father's Day when black men and women across the country are dying. That's what was said. That's what was said. And then the next step was a call to action. Get up away from your craft burger and beer and join the protest now or else. That was, that's what was said. Um, and then the protest went back down Market and culminated in front of the Charlottesville Police Department, put Allison's video on screen again, where you had numerous graffiti call-to-action messages painted on the brick wall in front of the police department and on the asphalt in front of the police department. So it's an interesting time. And, and, and give me a like and a share on any of the Facebook pages you're watching. And if you have some perspective you'd like to relay, here's a time to do it. Just put the comments in the comment section. Kelly Jackson says this. And Kelly Jackson in July is going to launch a show on the I Love Seville Network um, about women changing the world. And she is a phenomenal, phenomenal Rolodex. Is it even a Rolodex? She's a phenomenal um, contact list on her iPhone. Kelly says, was the person leading the protest and yelling at people dining from Seville? Yes. Yes. That is what happened. That is what happened. Um, I'm going to dot the I's and cross the T's, and I'm going to get to your comments here. And I encourage the protesters who've been strategic and peaceful and impactful so far to not impact the small businesses because this will undoubtedly backfire on you and cause the city that you live in to have a shortfall in financial resources. And that shortfall in financial resources will increase the wealth and race gap in the community. Here's what I mean. If you know the city of Charlottesville is struggling to meet its fiscal 2021 budget and it's cutting curriculum out of schools in the city and you happen to live there and you're a parent or two parents of means and wealth, you may consider pulling your kids out of city schools and going to a school system that has a curriculum in place that's robust and diverse. That is a microcosm of how a wealth gap or race gap can increase if financial resources are not allocated to the municipality to run the municipality correctly. Crazy times, guys. Crazy times.
Um, this is coming in from Grace. Jerry, I love your show. We're watching in Crozet. I agree 100% with you. We gave some thought to going to Citizen Burger Bar with our father on his Father's Day because he loves the Steakhouse Burger. However, after knowing protests were going to happen, we chose to stay in Crozet and not come to downtown Charlottesville. If this continues to happen, more people will act like this as well. The fact, um, I want to emphasize this. I'm frustrated in that what have we truly seen from leadership? And, and these folks are, I, these folks are, are, are people, and, and, and they, they're not doing it for the money. The mayor makes $20,000 a year. The other folks make eighteen k. The Almore County Board of Supervisors, they make less money than that. Okay, They're not doing it for the money. They're doing it because they care about the community. But in time of great hardship, and we're in times of great hardship, true leadership really steps up and, and, and deals with the, 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 the fact that people may disagree with you. And even though people may disagree with you, even if it's half the community, and probably is half the community, because that's how often voting happens, you, you, you're, you're like 52, 53, 54, 55% like that. If half the community disagrees with you, so be it. You're the leader. What have we seen from a leadership standpoint? What have we seen from city manager, Dr. Richardson? What have we seen from our city councilors? Will we see something on record from our city manager or our city councilors this week about the engagement of protesters with paying customers at private businesses on the downtown mall? Will we see any commentary? Does anyone have the backbone, the gumption, to even have dialogue like I'm having right now in a public setting? It takes guts. Yeah, it takes... You don't believe me? I, I'll speak from firsthand. It takes a lot of freaking guts to sit behind this microphone in front of 12 Facebook pages on something that can live forever online where you know a hell of a lot of people watch you and to have really real conversations like this. But it's, it's part of being a leader. That's what you have to do. And if you don't do it, then you're not a leader. And think about the time we're in now, okay? Think about the time we're in. Last week... Just give me a second here. Last week, the Albaro County Board of Supervisors, in a 3-3 split, Albaro County said, hell no, we won't go to Gordon and Taylor Sutton and a multi-generation Tiger Fuel company trying to build a market on the Boy Tavern. 3-3 means they couldn't get the special use permit, means they couldn't get the market. So here's, what I'm, here's literally where I'm going. So in the Almoro County where I live, our leadership is saying no to small business, entrepreneurship, and innovation at a time when its $400 million budget is in shambles, its schools are in shambles, parents and teachers are wondering what the hell is going on. You have three people on the Board of Supervisors say no to the market at Boyd Tavern despite it creating 24 new jobs and $100,000 in yearly taxable revenue that we sorely need. So in the county of Almoro, our leadership is turning its back on innovation and small business. And as we pivot the camera over here, Judah, and in the city of Charlottesville, I don't see our counselors or our city manager speaking up on the record yet since COVID has helped on how they can drive innovation, incremental revenue, and support the small business and entrepreneurship community. They're scared to talk. And it's called the Mike Signer effect. One time Charlottesville mayor who goes on record, studio camera please, one time Charlottesville mayor, Mike Signer, who goes on record as he's trying to build a political career during August 12, 2017, a man who has no concept whatsoever of optics, of being in touch with the community, and he tries to commandeer the situation, it backfires on him, and it creates a precedent of leadership in the city and the county being fearful of the Mike Signer reaction or the Mike Signer effect. If you disagree, let me know. I'm a cautious optimist that just sees things through that kind of perspective, a cautious, optimistic perspective. A lot of comments coming in here, live on 12 different Facebook pages. Give it a like and a share. We certainly would uh, appreciate that from you. Keith Smith is going to join us 
in about seven minutes. Keith Smith is the star of Real Talk. He is a tremendous real estate agent, realtor in this community. And if you need a trusted advisor, it's got to be Keith Smith and Jonas Smith. They are fantastic. Um, I want to go to the next headline before we go to them. This is about the Seville Bombs Group. And you know, what is nuts about this you got the blowers coming over here. We got to be watch out, watch out for our, our. We got a guy that we pay to blow the outside of our building, and we ask him not to come during the live programming, and it happens. Um, so be, be careful of him, J Dubs. The Seville Moms Group on Facebook has roughly 6,000 followers. Many of the moms in the Charlottesville community are part of this Facebook group, the Seville Moms Group. The Seville Moms Group now on a brief hiatus as the admins and the creators of the CMO Moms Group try to figure out a terms of service or the right approach for the group managing COVID, social unrest, and everything else that's happening. It's crazy of how this is coming down already to like the micro level, right? Man. I want to see a glimmer. I want to see a glimmer of uh, positivity or a glimmer of uh, hope in the near future, don't you? Don't we all want to see a little glimmer? Oh, my goodness gracious. Jude, I'm going to reach out to Keith, Keith Smith of the Yes Team Realtors and get his take on a lot of stuff. In fact, it's ringing now, Judah. He's the star of Real Talk Tuesdays and Fridays on the I Love Seville Network at 10.15 a.m. We have him on the line, Judah. If I can get a thumbs up from you to welcome the uh, distinguished gentleman who's looking uh, super distinguished this particular Monday afternoon. I'm getting the thumbs up from Judah. Keith, my friend, you are live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth the country in the world. Kapasa, how are you? Kapasa, amigo. Happy Father's Day, you, brother. Thank you. Same to you. How, how was your Father's Day? You know, if it was any better, it would have been illegal. Matter of fact, I think maybe it was a little illegal. Can I ask you this question here? Okay, I value your opinion. Uh-oh. Um, this is a tough question, okay? And you have the benefit of experience. You have the benefit of a lot of perspective here. Interesting situation played out yesterday with protesters engaging with paying customers on the downtown mall. I'll get out of your way. What are your thoughts? Well, um, so we've been here since 1987, and I think um, I'm in, you know, I, I support peaceful protests. I support folks um, speaking their mind, you know, God bless America, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, I remember in 1987 when my wife and I would walk down the downtown mall, most of it was boarded up. Um, unfortunately, I think I was listening between uh, answering other calls, um, you know, uh, certain people are gonna not going downtown, man. That, that's just what's going to happen. And um, it's funny you should say that. Part of what I wanted to talk about this week is... Um, National Association of Realtors has put out their new, inter, what they call their generational report for 2020. And that actually um, is uh, done a year before. So it's from June to July of 2019. And I've got it in my hot little hands here. 53% of the folks aged between 22 and 39 moved into the suburban or sub, uh, subdivision. Only 14% of that age group was in the urban the year before, 19. Again, that was a year before. It was 48%. So that number is going up, and I suspect um, you're going to see that continue to go up. You're going to start seeing the largest buying block, which is 38% of millennials, moving out for the traditional white picket fence. And so I don't know what that means. I, I, I think what happened this weekend or yesterday is probably going to raise that. COVID, of course, has helped that quite a bit. Um, how, how about this I, question to you? How about this? I, I love You have a really good way of uh, telling a story and, and, and keeping us engaged here. When you got here in 87 and you said the mall was boarded up, I got here in 2000, so that's 13 years before me. And when I got here in 2000, for the first year, I stayed in the bubble that was UVA. So I'm trying to learn here. When you saw it from 87 to now, Give me like the flip book of what you saw with Charlottesville in the city with like, and we could just talk about the buildings and just like, you know, going and supporting downtown. Just give me a flip book. 
Well, it's very simple. We went from that to 14th in the country as number of restaurants per capita, right? So that, that took time. And, and to, you know, just remember in, in 87, there was one vineyard and it was um, Barbersville. Jefferson. No, well, it was bar- two, yeah. actually. Barbersville and Jefferson. I'm talking about Charlottesville. Uh, proper you know around around that and now look look what we have we have 151 fun right on that so uh look you know it's um i'm a few years older than you i I think um you know i i think what has happened um is wrong i think you know the police department needs to reform itself without a doubt um but i think it needs to be done intently and smartly and um Otherwise, I think as you were saying in your opening intro today, I think you're going to see um, the city suffer. And um, and this is coming off the cuff. Uh, be careful for what you ask for. You might just get it. He's exactly right. He's exactly right. And here's an interesting thing that we'll cover later in the week. I'm talking to my friends that are the restaurateurs downtown. The leases are coming for renewal now. Yeah. So these restaurant owners now are having to make the decision of whether or not to renew their leases downtown. That's literally happening this summer. So that's a crazy topic to follow there. All right, um, distinguished gentlemen, the show is yours. You have some phenomenal statistics. I'm going to follow your lead, Batman. Uh, Robin's going to adjust to you. Where are we going to go? I'm following your lead here. I think we need to go to a a store and get some – that would be too weird – get some costumes. Uh, So, look, tomorrow we're going to bring in uh, Justine Montgomery, um, who's a client of ours, um, and we're going to talk about, you know, right now there's there's a a lack of inventory, and we're going to talk the five rights, the right location, price, features, condition, and timing, right? When is the right time to do this, to get it on the market? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, And then the second half of tomorrow's show, you and I are going to have fun. I don't know what we're going to talk about. We're just going to have fun. Uh, we're going to do the Batman Robin routine. But I'm super excited about Friday, which is interesting because we might be able to ask this on a national level. We have probably the top uh, speaker in the country coming out to talk about real estate from a national wide. Uh, her name is J- Jamie Norwalk with the Buffini and Company folks. And we're going to uh, have a conversation about you know what's ha- what impacts are the real estate happening on a nationwide thing. So I'm pretty pretty excited about that. So activity, right? We're doing this on Mondays. Activities for the week before um, last week, six in this 25 mile radius, 69 homes went active, 101 went pending, and 103 went sold. Two important numbers: active and pendings. That's basically a one to uh, 50 to one ratio, meaning as there's two buyers for one house, and so inventory uh, needs to be picked up a little bit. Hopefully, we'll help that on the show. We talked about this um, to tease, and this was a macro story nationwide about May home sales. Do we think May was the bottom? Yeah, I do, actually, um, and I think May was the bottom. I was just reading that report before you called me. Um, uh, I think it's the bottom because of lack of inventory, not because of lack of buyers, not a lack of, of, I mean, interest rates are historic lows. There's buyers out. We have a ton of them trying to find homes for them. It's, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, I've, I've got one that we were trying to put a contract in at Lake Monticello yesterday. It went in three hours. Nice. $375,000 house. That's a good this price. Is not a cheap, it's not a cheap home yeah. you know, for out here. So um, I think you're going to see May numbers down, but in my opinion, it's, it's purely a lack of inventory. You know, you're going to look like Nostradamus, and it's, it's a testament to your experience and your skill set here. Fluvanna, you have said for oh, yeah. 18 months. You have said it for 18 months. And, dude. Somebody didn't believe me. I didn't believe said. you at first. <laughs> I didn't believe you at first. Dude, you are so right, and COVID has, yeah. COVID has, has, has magnified it. So um, we're, uh, um, I don't want to get my eyes off the camera, look on the thing, but I believe, I didn't look this morning, but I believe we're in the low 30s on the number of houses available, particularly at Lake Monticello, which has 4,200 homes. That's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous, right? Ridiculously low, yeah. So um, that's what you're going to start seeing. You, you know, I think this is not a drive to your qualify thing. I think there's now this is drive to what's available. Yeah. Right. I think you're going to start seeing that. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping, um, you know, there's some leadership taken at the city level to, 
at least engage with these folks that are protesting and and hear them and listen to them. I think a lot of this is a lack of a lack of that. You know, you have a young child, right? If you don't listen to the young child, sometimes they act out. So my hope is is there's an actual engagement and actual conversation and and it gets out there in the media. So hopefully that happens. I, I well said. I agree hundred percent, my friend. It's almost like and, and you're a leader here too, it's almost like it's the exact one eighty of August twelfth, two thousand seventeen. And it's sure. like almost fearful of like what A12 2017 did. So because of that fear, it's like we're not gonna do anything whatsoever at all. Well, there's two things that you said that I that I did not register until you said them. The first one is um, Mayor Signer, right? You're 100% right. Nobody's going to stick their neck out. Um, hopefully they will. Hopefully they'll do the right thing to quote Spike Lee, but, you know, uh, they'll stick the neck out. You know, and, and the, second, the second part of it is, um, you know, it wasn't too long ago, like weeks ago, that we were trying to support local restaurants and now we're trying to chase people away. I, I, um, I don't know what, you possibly gain from that other than shutting people down. And, you know, just to quote a, an old thing, right. You can catch, well, I, I can't use it. Right. Cause we don't want to go with that language. Right. But you can catch uh, more flies with honey than you know what, sure. or whatever. I've, I've got it backwards. Uh, I was going to go with the, the vulgarity were out, but I figured I'd get myself into trouble. So I didn't want to do that. My wife is sitting downstairs. so she She's watching right now. She She's don't, watching. We don't right want to get Yoda. Uh, we this, don't want to get Yoda. <laughs> this man is amazing. Um, Keith Smith. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 15. All right, how about a final word? Everybody's watching you. Anywhere you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. No, the final word is, is I'm excited to watch Kelly Jackson do her thing. That that is, and my hats off to you. You're really growing your network and your shows, and and bringing some engaging people in it. So I'm excited to listen to what Kelly Jackson has to say. Tune in tomorrow. We'll watch the Batman and Robin show. We, we got to come up with a better. That was your idea. That. That was... Yeah, I know it was, but that's because I'm a, I'm a I'm a 60s 70s kind of guy. So uh, we got to think something a little bit better because that may be a little creepy. I don't know. <laughs> we'll come up with something else. Did you have a good fa- Did you have a good Father's Day? Man, I had a great Father's Day. I got to talk to Skype, uh, excuse me, FaceTime both my ladies, up my girls up in New York or Connecticut and Seattle. Um, met my, had my father and mother over for dinner and told them thank you for showing us how it's really done. So um, yeah, it was great, man. I, it's uh, it was a good time, really good time. Good, good. I'm excited to see you tomorrow. Yeah, you know, I, my two best day of my my well, two and a half days of my best day of week. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and now a little bit. A little bit on Monday. Tuesdays so. and Fridays. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Tuesdays get, and I'm, Fridays. I'm, Friday, sorry, sorry. I'm so excited about seeing you. I don't even know what day it is. Good Could as, be the age, though. Good, Could be the age. Good to see you, pal. You have a good one. See you later, man. You did a great well. job. Thanks, Judah. See you around, guys. Uh, Keith Smith, the Yes Team Realtors, guys. If you need a trusted advisor, it's Keith Smith. I've seen it firsthand. The Yes Team Realtors, guys. Big time guy. Big time people. Um, I... And we're gonna, I want to see the leadership. I want to see the leadership. We need to see something. We need to see, oh my gosh, I think we may have Patty on the line. Patty, can you see me? Judah, we may have Patty Zeller here. We need you to, we need you to turn on your camera, though. Can you tap the camera? Oh my gosh, I think she's got her camera turned. Oh my gosh, can you turn it horizontally? Hey! Turn it horizontally. Turn it horizontally. Turn it horizontally for us. Judah, do we have Patty? <laughs> Okay, you are live. All right, you may need to turn it back the other way because you're sideways. I can't believe we made this work. Patty Zeller, Animal Connection, the star of What's Barking Local. You made it work. We made it work. Oh, my God. Technology is an amazing thing. Okay, okay. I'm going to get out of your way. The show is yours. Make sure your face is in the screen here. Here, um, Tell us what you're doing. You're, you're launching a, a, a big-time change to your business. Well, we are. Uh, we are moving our store over to Ix Art Park, and we are adding a thousand more square feet to our already big business. And uh, with that one thousand square feet, we are adding uh, in-house dog training, a bakery, uh, an outdoor dog play area. Yeah, you can come and drink beer with your dog and and watch him play and meet some people that 
like dogs. It's just going to be fantastic. She's been working so <laughs> hard on this. So hard on this. So here's some very phenomenal news. The fabulous businesswoman and entrepreneur and visionary that is Patty Zeller is moving her business, Animal Connection, from behind Seville Coffee and McIntyre to the Ix Art Park. What is it you love about Ix, Patty? Well, I just love the community aspect of it. It's really fun. I mean, there's a great lineup of businesses already there. I mean, from Lampo Pizza to Razos to Three Notch Brewery to Jaybird Coffee. Uh, there's a great bike shop there. There's things happening in different studios. Uh, there's just a lot going on. The farmer's market is there. Um, I understand there may be something in the works that has to do with a uh, Maybe extra food trucks and con or setting up uh, food businesses in containers of all things. There's just a lot of creativity happening, and it's alive and thriving. And I know I just love it over there. We had we've already had dog fest there um, for the last four years, and we're and we're hoping we can do it again this year. That's amazing. So let me throw this to you. Yeah. I'm so excited. You got comments coming in. We're going to get to these comments here. Why? Explain this. Explain how. Um, how, why you made the change, um, why the extra space is critical in today's retail landscape. Well, here, here's the thing about retail. I mean, not just in our business, but any business. Um, you know, we find that we got a lot of competition from, from uh, Chewy.com and Amazon, and I'm really not going to price compete with those guys. I'm going to do the man manufacturer's retail price, and, and that's where I'm going to stay. Um, but for a business like ours, we need to be very heavy in services because um, Chewy and Amazon can't compete on services. They can't provide grooming, self-serve dog wash. They can't do a dog bakery in in house and you know make special cakes for your dogs on on their birthdays or their gotcha day. Uh, they can't do dog training. I mean, there's a lot of things that they can't do. So you know, we're trying to position ourselves to be very services heavy. And we're just not able to do that at our present location. So it's been great. It's been fun. Love the party. But we've been here since 2003, and it's time to make a change. I love this woman's um, affinity for taking <laughs> risk and doing big-time moves oh, here <laughs> because this is a risk that undoubtedly is going to pay off for her. The new location. Tell us um, the vision for the new location. Give us the flip book of what you expect. Well, the flip, what can you expect is, is more of uh, just what we're doing now, just a lot more of it. But, um, you know, we're lucky that we're inheriting a really great space. We're going to be in the former Wooden Sun space. Um, we will have this beautiful patio in front of our store that has a built-in grill, a wet bar. I mean, great. A dog store with its own bar. Woohoo! So, um, you know, we have room for social events. Um uh, we are in the works to get an outdoor play area, which is really nice. Uh, so when you come into our store, it's going to say have that same sort of funky country store, but not cutesy vibe that we've enjoyed uh, since 2003, but just a lot more of it. Uh, we're going to increase our self-serve dog wash areas, our grooming areas. Um, and gosh, having that in-house training is going to be awesome. Um, Heather Travis of Lead the Way Canine is going to be teaching classes, and she and her staff are going to be there. Uh, you know, we can have birthday parties, uh, all kinds of things going on. She literally is creating a vertically integrated business with a number of different services under yeah. one roof. And then when you go to this one roof, you can say, I have this plethora or this buffet of services to better my cat or dog. It is freaking brilliant. Yeah, um, it's going to be really fun. Uh, can I throw this to you, Patty? You're going to be next to Lampo, Brazos, yeah. and Three Notch. Oh, my gosh. I know, and I'm a Weight Watchers. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's going to be the hardest not to eat for you or drink? Well, well, I can do all of those things. I just have to count my points. <laughs> I just have to be careful and plan my day. <laughs> all right. You, I'm so glad we make this work out. She's going to be with us Me on too. Wednesday on What's Barking Local, her show on the I Love Seville Network. <laughs> How about this, Patty? Let me throw this to you. Um, anywhere you want to go, a final word. Um, for Charlottesville, a lot of people watching now. We look up to you. The show is yours. Sure. The show is yours. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, bring your dogs and cats in to see us. You know, we're trying to get some uh, new products in here. You know, July 4th is coming, and we've already been inundated with fireworks out the wazoo. I live down on the south end of uh, the Belmont area, and it's pretty rowdy there at night these days. So 
uh, come in and let us help you get some calming things for your dog for all these fireworks. And also, if you are considering going back to your workplace, uh, you know, there can be some stress anxiety with dogs. I mean, separation is a real deal. So let us help you with that in advance. So there, you know, it's not such a big shock when you go back. And we're, we're super excited about everybody getting to go back to work. I mean, you know, just it's nice to see uh, cars in the parking lot over at McIntyre. Hey. You know, it's been really empty for a while. Um, I'll see you Wednesday. Um, thank yeah. you. I'm glad we worked this out. Thank you for yeah. coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you for technology assistance. You guys have a good one. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye. 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 Um, okay. So I'm going to dot the I's and cross the T's on this. There are few, and, and leave your comments in the comment section of any of these Facebook pages you're watching on. There are few entrepreneurs, business women, and business men in Charlottesville and in Central Virginia who have launched or expanded their models since COVID hit. Hunter Smith is one of them at the Champion Hospitality Group. Hunter Smith is got Laura Foner in the mix, and Hunter Smith and Laura Foner are going to launch a dumpling truck this summer. Hunter Smith, you read the tea leaves, linked to the Commonwealth Sky Bar restaurant that's empty, Right, Hunter Smith and Craig Hartman are doing, um, is it the Ice House in Gordonsville? And remember, in December, or, 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 or this past, at the end of 2019, Hunter just launched Champion Grill in Stonefield. So there's few business owners, business women and men, who are expanding their models in a COVID time. Hunter and Champion undoubtedly are one of them. Patty Zeller at Animal Connection is taking her business where she's been since 2003 in the McIntyre Plaza behind Seville Coffee, and she said, I'm going to go from there to the X Art Park. I'm going to take more square footage. I'm going to expand my service offering. I'm going to expand my business in a COVID-19 landscape. So props, props. Props, props. It takes guts and courage to take risks like that in uncertain times, and I'm going to celebrate and champion people that do. To be frank, we also did that. We also expanded our model in a COVID-19 time um, to the benefit of the model. So it, 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 in great hardship comes great opportunity if you can see it and if you can find it and if you're willing to go after it. Hardship now is creating opportunity, and some folks can see it. That's just the first step. The next step is whether or not you have the affinity for risk to pursue the opportunity, and then the next step after that is whether or not you have the skill set to execute. You could have the affinity for the risk. You could see the opportunity, but do you have the skill set to execute to make the risk a reality and profitable. I think Hunter and Patty are gonna do that. And to have Patty's business in the Ix Art Park, it's genius. She's created Dog Fest, a festival for dogs at the Ix Art Park that has food trucks and live music and, and vendors in the food and dog space at Ix. She does that in the fall, in September, right, Patty? At the end of September. She had 5,000 people there last year. I was one of the judges for the dog costume contest. 5,000 people at her yearly festival in Ix. Now she's putting her headquarters right next to her yearly festival. She's going to create a little dog place in that grassy area. So dudes, you guys can drive to Patty's store in Ix. You can find parking no problem. You can take your dog into Patty's store for a grooming session, for a self-serve dog wash session, to get knowledge of keeping your pet healthy, to get food for your pet, to get your pet trained by a professional trainer. You can then leave your pet for a little bit of time to play in the play area so it gets some exercise, and you can do all that while sitting at the location, the new Animal Connection in the XR Park, drinking beer and wine. Oh my God, it's freaking brilliant. I love it, Patty. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
And I think the community is going to love it too. Job well done, mi amiga. I want to get out of here on this note. Tyler Berry, welcome to the program. I love Tyler Berry. I love Catch the Chef, the mobile food cart. I love what Tyler Berry and what his phenomenal wife are doing with bringing food to you. Tyler, you got skills to pay the bills, dog. Give the show a like and a share on any of these Facebook pages that you guys are watching on. This coming in from Laura. Jerry, I watch your program just about every day. Thank you for giving us local content here in Charlottesville. You look at the news like nobody else does. Please tell your guest, Patty, we will be there with our Jack Russell Terrier bingo. We've been looking for something in the city where we can bring our dog and our kids to play and run around to, and it sounds like she's building just that. Can you ask her when she's going to open? The grand opening, Patty, I think is scheduled for later this summer. I'll give you those exact details when I know. I, it's a work in progress, but I think later this summer. Thank you for chiming in with that comment. Here's another comment coming in. This one's from Neil. Jerry, I agree that we need leadership in the city, and we have not seen that. Who do you think is going to be the leader that needs to speak up? Question mark. Jerry. You know who it has to be? Do you think if everybody, do you think if, if Lloyd or if Heather or if Michael or if Cena went to a pedestal or a podium on the downtown mall and had a press conference, and if Cena McGill or Michael Payne or Councillor Heather Hill or Councillor Lloyd Snook had this pedestal and this podium on the downtown mall for this press conference about what the city was going to do, do you want to know how that would be received? Probably not well. I would bet the reception from the protesters would be something like this. You're a privileged white person that has the benefit of society making things and doing things in your favor. Don't tell us what to do. Everyone knows. Everyone knows that's watching this program. And if you don't, listen, because I'm about to explain it. It's got to be the mayor. It's got to be the mayor. It's got to be Mayor Walker. And you, I don't know if you watched this, but last Monday's council meeting, and thank you to James for bringing this to my attention. James, you're watching. You know who you are. I'm grateful when the viewers give us content. On last Monday's council meeting, you saw unrest in a public forum between the mayor and Mayor Walker and, and, and Tanisha Hudson. And they were straight up squabbling and bickering on the record during a council meeting. And Tanisha Hudson is a, an, a leader and an activist um, in, in, in the Charlottesville community. It's got to be the mayor that speaks up. Dave Warwick says this to you, Patty. I'm so excited. Congratulations on your new opening. Won't you be, could you be, my neighbor? From Dave Warwick. I love Dave Warwick. I love his beer. Dan Blake, welcome to the program. Thank you kindly for joining us. Aaron Hill says, I'm so excited to have Animal Connection come to Ix. Aaron Hill, the phenomenal broker that uh, manages a lot of Ludwig and Alan Kajin's property around the city of Charlottesville. She does a good job, Aaron Hill. Carol Thorpe has this comment. I think Chief Brackney, Dr. Richardson, Mayor Walker, and the rest of the city council should have been out there bright and early this morning with buckets and scrub brushes because they allowed protesters to vandalize the street with profanity unchallenged. Why should city taxpayers have to, ha have to foot the bill to pay time for city workers to do the cleaning? Also, protesters bullying Father's Day diners and families on the downtown mall, shaming them for their privilege to enjoy their meal rather than join the defund the police rally is ridiculous and counterproductive. That's from Carol Thorpe. Put the photos back on screen of what we captured this morning. Judah captured these photos today. Five city workers on the city dime and a bunch of heavy machinery being used to eradicate the call to action messages 
that were left in yesterday's protest in front of the Charlottesville Police Department. I wonder the cost of five personnel with heavy equipment, what the cost of that is from a tax standpoint. Interesting. All right. Teresa Davis says, Patty, congratulations. That's absolutely amazing. Cameline Leon says, Patty really has it figured out. I'm going to check it out. Beer and dogs, right? What a great combination. She has it figured out. She really does. This is the I Love Seville show. We need, I'll close on this. And if you agree, like the show now and share the show now. And in fact, like and share it to Leadership's Facebook page and say, listen to what Jerry has to say here. Please try to embody some of these qualities. I'm going to close with 90 to 120 seconds of commentary and then get out of here. In the last five business days, and I want this to turn into a sizzle reel here, Judah. You ready for this? Let's start this now. Okay? Mark the time down. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Judah. In the last five business days, we have watched Albemarle County leadership turn its back on a locally owned business in Tiger Fuel that is a generational community steward and said, no, you cannot have a special use permit to build a market in Boyd Tavern in Keswick, despite the fact that this special use permit will allow you to create a, a location, a market that will create 24 new jobs and drive $100,000 in taxable revenue at a time when the Albemarle County $400 million budget is at a critical shortfall. So Board of Supervisors in a 3-3 special use permit split vote says no to this entrepreneurial, innovative endeavor that would undoubtedly have helped the city, helped the county um, financially. That was Thursday. That was Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Today it's Monday, and we have yet on the record, outside of Mayor Walker during the first protest, which she encouraged protesters in the city to breathe, which I applauded her for her leadership. Outside of that, we've not seen the city manager or council step up in a vocal setting and lead the charge of where the city needs to go. Yesterday, we saw protests, protesters engage with customers on downtown restaurants and demand that they get up out of their seats and join the protests. If not, they were seen as this, that, or this. You fill in the blank. If there's ever a time for someone to speak up and lead, now's it. Now's it. And for the protesters, think big picture and don't hurt the businesses in the community that drive the taxable dollars that can be leveraged to create um, racial justice and that can be leveraged to bridge the wealth gap. Think big picture. Because if you don't, you risk a flight away from city for housing and the patronizing of businesses. And we've seen that happen in the past. And this happens every now and again where downtowns become afterthoughts. And downtowns become afterthoughts because of concerns for safety and downtowns can become afterthoughts because of pricing out tenants, and downtowns can become afterthoughts because local leadership does not prioritize innovation, entrepreneurship, and small business in its downtown corridor. And every aspect that I just said is happening right now. A portion of the marketplace is concerned about safety. Landlords are still charging their tenants on pre-COVID rent. And those leases are now coming up for renewal this summer. Leadership is not standing up for a downtown quarter that's in a fragile position. That's a recipe for a lot of stuff. I'm Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Sevo Show.